What's up, everybody? I'm Danny L, and this is Lemon Lane. Today's lane has me all the way in Los Angeles, California, with one of Loyola Marymount's very own women's basketball players. Let me tell you, I've heard so much about this player. I'm super excited to have her here with me. She is a six foot forward powerhouse from Chatsworth, California, sophomore rocket number 35, Alexis Smart. What's up, Alexis? I was doing good. <laughs> I'm super excited to have you here with me. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come chat with me on Lemon Lane for a little bit so we can get into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So before we start off or talk about anything, I just want to know what mindset are you in right now? I know on Saturday, your team took a tough loss to Gonzaga. How are you feeling about that? Um, we play pretty good, so I don't feel too rough about it. We're heading into the tournament right now, so new games coming up, and I'm just thinking every game is a new game. Um, I started off with uh, in the beginning of the season averaging 10 points, and then now I'm starting off averaging 15 to 20, so I just changed my mindset to be aggressive on all sides of the court right now, so I'm just ready and hungry to get, get to it. She's ready and hungry. So you guys finished off with a 9-8 and eight record. Some people will consider that a losing record, but how do you stay in your winning mindset mentality of looking forward to the new game that you're getting ready to be a part of for the rest of the season? Well, like I said, I just think of every game as a new game. Um, I just think of the past as a past. And for us to get ready and to prepare right now, we have to just come with competitive mindsets and play hard against each other and push each other so that when we play the best that we're willing to give our best. I like that. I like that. You, I keep on hearing you say us, we, it's really team motivated, but I want to focus on you for a little bit because you had a big game. Yeah. You had yeah. 21 points, five rebounds, four steals, and a block. So did this game remind you of how it was when you used to play in high school or more like your freshman year? Hmm. Actually, it doesn't remind me of any of them because um, my high school and I would say my freshman year, I wasn't really offensively minded. I was more focused on defense and more focused on rebounding. But now this year I've expanded my game for it not to just be defensive and rebounding, but also to be to be aggressively minded um, offensively and for me to be a threat. So I just feel like um, I feel like I showed a, a new me, uh, very confident with the ball, taking it up in fast breaks and um, taking it up on myself and rebounding um, and my teammates looking for me down low. So you said that you've been practicing on being more of an offensive player and being more present on the offensive side of things. So let's go back to high school because you did a lot of big things in high school. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that mentality, what it, how it changed from where you were then and why you were so focused on being such a defensive player because you were named the top defender during your senior year. So what does that look like in comparison to where you are now? I would say then um, I was playing with very good people and it was my first time playing with a whole team that's just division one um, bound. So I was saying I just wanted to find my own role and find, find a way for me to stand out. And I would say that would be rebounding and defense. So I focus on that. I always took pride in my defense. Um, and then I would say the difference now is that I just am more comfortable and more confident with all the work that I put in that I'm able to, you know, show my show how gifted I am in all sides of the court, pretty much. So it's senior year. This is what, 2019, 2020? That was your senior year? Yeah, around then, yes. So it's senior year. Were you already committed to a college, or did you decide that after the fact? So I committed to Boise State in October, my senior year. So I waited a pretty long time. Um, I waited to the second period of committing, and everybody was already committed. So, yeah, I, I was committed towards the middle end of my senior year. Why Boise State? Hmm. Well, I went to go take a visit there. Um, 
I took visits everywhere, but I went out of my way out of there. And when I went there, it was just they're just, they're just a winning team. They just wanted to win. And that's, that's what, that's how my mindset is. I'm very competitive. I just want to win. And, um, you know, they had broadcasting stuff. So I was interested in that, but they just wanted to win. So I wanted to be or, you know, on a winning team. Awesome. So you wanted to be a part of a winning team. When did the decision come up to transfer schools? Cause you're no longer at Boise state. Now you're at Loyola Marymount. Why the change? Well, I would say um, I'm very family orientated and it was a really, it was a hard struggle my first year being there. I played, I, I think I had a great season and great school year, but um, you know, I, I really want my family to see my games. I have a new uh, baby brother in and I wanted to be a part of his life, be around there a lot. So I just, I made the change to be, um, so my family could be a part of my life, my college career. Awesome. So there's a couple of things that you touched on with that answer. Um, so you you have siblings. Yes. Uh, four brothers. Four brothers. So you're the only girl. Four boys yep. <laughs> and the only girl. What was it like growing up in a male dominated family? How competitive was it? Uh, we all played basketball, every single one of my brothers. So I actually think that helped with my basketball. Um, they would always push me and I was fight with them and stuff like that. Um, so I just feel like they just made me tougher. I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy to be the only girl. <laughs> I'm the only girl too. So I know oh, it's, really? I'm the only girl, I'm the middle child. So it's like the best of both worlds. For me. Like they were yeah. my introduction into sports. What about you? So who was other than your brothers or were, was it your brothers that were your main influence to get into sports or to play basketball? Actually, my main influence was my mom because she, I was dancing for 13 years before this, um, like professionally too. And I really wanted to pursue dance, but I also had basketball on the side. Basketball wasn't something I was completely in love with up until high school, but my mom um, pushed me to get more into basketball because she seen more opportunities. So I would say my mom influenced me. Okay, awesome. So was your mom like your main support system when it came time to transfer from Boise State or was there somebody else that was in your corner like, yeah, you should go after it. Like, this is what you want to do. You want to be closer to family. Go ahead, take that leap of faith. Yeah, I would say uh, my family and my previous coaches were definitely there for me for my support system. Um, you know, my family would love for me to be around them 24 seven. So I think they're perfectly fine with it, even though they love Boise State, but they knew wherever I went that I would succeed. Right. So you said your coaches, what do you still have any type of relationship with any of your former teammates, your coach? Like what, how present are they now that you're this D one star, you're playing for Loyola Marymount, you're making big things happen. Yeah. Um, I am very close to all of my previous teammates. Um, one of them is my best friend. Um, she's killing it this year and the coaches, well, it's illegal for us to reach out, but, um, I'm, I'm very still, um, like attached to them and, you know, they, we still have a pretty good relationship. Right. So what, what was the transition like? So you're going to a school that you said, I wanted to be with them because they're winning. And now you're on a team where it's not a winning team, but it's not also a losing team. What's that like? Um, I would say it's more learning for me this year. Um, I would say that this year is more of a a year where new coaching staff, new new players I had to play with, new school. Um, I just say it was an adjusting year for me. But in order for me to be in this position, it opened my mind up, expanded my learning for a whole new coaching staff. So I say actually, although we aren't winning as much, I say that I've learned and grew as a player way more. So you don't think that losing is a problem for you? Like it's okay because you're learning, you know, patience and being a uh, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn that I'm learning. Losing is never okay with me. Um, it, it's never okay with me. So, yeah, it is frustrating, but I'm trying to look at the bigger side of things. The bigger picture, exactly. So, we were talking a little bit about how you went from just being a defensive player to being present on both sides of the court. Talk to me about, or tell me a little bit about who do you mimic your game after? Like, who do you watch film and say, okay, I want to get this shot down packed or I want to guard like this or they not getting past me. They're not going to drop me, break my ankles or do any of that while I'm on this court. 
Um, I would say growing up, my favorite player would be Kevin Garnett. And defense, yeah, yeah, that's where I started it off defensively. I think that's why I was so aggressively. Yeah, exactly. And you already know how he played. Uh, I watched a couple of games, games of his. Um, but, you know, he was before my time, kind of. And he, uh, I watched his motivational videos of anything. And he would just talk about how much pride he would take in defense. And offensively, I mean, I think I just grew a pair of my own. Also, I like to hear that. Because K- KG is a problem. He grew on me, especially when he was yeah. in Celtics. So if you were mic'd up, what will we hear you screaming on the court or telling your teammates or – what what is it? What is it? What is going through Alexis's mind when she's on the court? If I was mic'd up, I think you guys, I think it would be a comedy show actually, because um, well, one, you'd be hearing me breathe hella hard, and two, uh, I would say I, I'm a little bit of a, t- a trash talker, a little bit, and so I'm very competitive, and sometimes it comes out vocally. So I think if I was mic'd up, you'd be hearing me either tell my teammates like, "Come on, like, what are you doing?" Or um, either talking to the other opponents. Awesome. Get back, get back. Like, we made a shot, but let's get back on defense. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What is the ultimate goal? So where do you see yourself after college? So after college, I want to play um, professional basketball a little bit. And then after that, I want to pursue my own business and opening my own gym and training there. I'm um, training kids there. Um, also, I wanted to make it a dance company. So I'm looking to open up my own business. Okay, nice. So you said you wanted to play professionally. Mm-hmm. What is your number one team that's like, oh, man, if I get drafted, I want to be in their jersey. I want to be there. Definitely the Sparks. Because, <laughs> you know, I want to be, yeah, playing for my home city and stuff. That. What would you tell a 14-year-old Alexis, freshman Alexis, first time playing either, did you play varsity in high school? I didn't even ask. Yeah, yeah, I started varsity in high school, yeah. So varsity Alexis, that's just into a new world. Like now it's the elevation from elementary or AAU now into high school. I'd probably tell 14-year-old Alexis to um, to just never – to wait for the opportunity to come pretty much that all my hard work will be rewarded. Sometimes when I was younger I would think I would work out every single day for a couple hours. And sometimes in games it wouldn't show and other times in games my work would show. I would just say to, to be patient and that my work will be rewarded. Definitely hard work. <laughs> be talent. Yeah. talent fails to work hard all the time. Exactly. Most definitely, I like that. So. What can we expect from you with these? You're in your sophomore year, getting ready to be a junior. You already said that the end goal for that is making it. But what do you want to see yourself do with these last two years of college? If you're these last, yeah, um, these last few years, I definitely want to be an elite player throughout um, every single one of my games. I want to be very consistent. That's my my end goal: consistency. Uh, I want to be averaging double doubles every single game. I've had like a couple double doubles every single season, but I want to be averaging averaging that throughout the whole season. Oh, you are. I want to be like Westbrook. <laughs> yeah, Westbrook. double doubles. Um, I want to be very hard to very hard to stop. Expand my game. Um, be able to shoot the three ball. Um, way more consistent, and it'd be very hard to stop me. And another thing, end goal for my whole team is to win rings. Regardless, I want to win a ring before I leave. Okay, because yeah. you did you did win a state title in high school. Yeah, I have my rings right here. <laughs> you can show them if you want. We gotta. Okay, I'll show you guys. All right. <laughs> all right, we got rings. We got rings. This is not just all talk, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's my Sierra Canyon ring. Okay. Okay, see that one? Yeah, so it usually has your name and then on the side and the year. And then this one's my, oh. this is when I played varsity in high school, my freshman year, and we won. The CIF, yeah. The name on it, everything. It's official. Yep. Look. <laughs> so what's so what's that? What's that? What does it feel like? Like what was what was going through your mind? You guys won a state title. You got a ring. Were you basking in the moment, or were you just ready to? All right, what's next? 
like we have another season coming up. Like, were you content with winning that state title or were you just built on the fact that, listen, I got to get back on the court. I got to get these shots up. I got to work harder. I definitely would say that I was definitely in the moment enjoying it. Um, I was just so happy both times, but I was definitely thinking about, okay, there's more to come. What does your, what does your off season look like? My off season is a lot, a lot of training, um, but it's more of the right training. It's not just being in the gym. I learned my lesson from when I was younger, being in the gym like five hours and just, just doing um, drills that aren't beneficial and just working, working on my body really hard. Um, I would say more of getting a lot of shots up, a lot of reps up, um, having playing, playing a lot. I want to scrimmage a lot in the summer. So I, I'm, I get smarter on the court um, with my IQ, all that. So, yeah. I like it. I like it. I'm impressed. <laughs> So do you have any advice to any high school students that's getting ready to embark on their journey into college and becoming a student athlete? Um, You could talk about student athlete life and balancing school as well as playing a sport or whatever you want. I would tell um, the younger ones that to enjoy the process. Um, It goes by really fast and um, some practices you may not feel like getting up and you may not feel like working as hard, but every practice that you work hard in, um, it'll all pay off. So I would just say to enjoy every single moment of it. And a lot of people are not able to do what we are doing um, today. So, you know, just take this moment, um, take advantage of this moment and it will end up getting you a free scholarship. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, that scholarship money for college is definitely needed. So stay in your yeah. place, work hard. Any last things you want to say to the camera as we wrap this up? No, just thank you for having me. (laughs) No problem. Do you want to drop your social media handles? Make sure you guys check this out. Follow her on social media. Uh, Yeah. My Instagram is uh, Lexi.Mark, two I's, L-E-X-I-I dot M-A-R-K. Okay. And y'all make sure that in two years, Y'all watching out for that W that WNBA draft because Alexis Mark is gonna be top of that list. Some somebody's gonna come get her. They gonna use her as an asset on both sides of the court. So again, thank you, Alexis. Thank you so much for giving me your time and letting me interview. This one's been a long time coming. This one has been a long time coming. But that's all we have for you today, guys. I'm Danielle. This has been Lemons Lane. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at fresh.lemon.sports underscore for more.